everyone. Welcome to Scott Space. Today I'm going to do episode four of my mechanics series for Distant Worlds 2. And today's episode is about terraforming, planet quality, and suitability. All right, so you may know a lot about this. You may not know anything about this. So I'm going to cover the basics here. So there's two times when you want to think about suitability. So when you're thinking about colonizing a new planet, so if I'm looking at new colonies here, and I want to see what's a good place to colonize, I want to make sure that for any of the races that I have, so in my empire here, I only have Akhtarians and humans. So I want to find a planet where either one of those races has at least 20% suitability. Otherwise, it'll take an extraordinary long time to become profitable. So anything below 20% suitability is not important. Now in my guide, which you can download, the links included in the description, I have a chart that sort of simplifies everything. All you gotta do is look at that chart and there's a number there that tells you uh, in green, you know, what planet is best for which race and what sh what's the best benefit that each race gets for that particular type of planet. The other time you wanna consider this is when you're thinking of invading, right? So in this game, if I zoom out to the galaxy level, I'm thinking of invading this planet over here from my nearby neighbors. And they're Octarians, even though I'm human, I do have some Octarians in my empire. And if I click on their planet here, I want to check that their suitability is at least 21%. Okay, so right now it is just barely 21%. That's because it's taken some damage. The quality is normally 44%, but it's down 3%. So that actually affects the suitability as well. So we're going to talk about... Uh, what you can do if you have a minimum of 20% or even if you're close to 20%, what you can do to increase the quality of the planet and what you can do to increase the suitability of the planet. All right. And big picture is that you can use terraforming to, once you research it, to increase the quality by 5% increments, and that will automatically increase the suitability as well. And you can research certain texts to increase the suitability for all races by five and then 10 and then 15 and then 20 by five increments. So both of these in conjunction will raise the quality of the planet and or raise the suitability, but both of them will raise the revenue that you get from the planet by either reducing corruption or reducing penalties for having a planet that's too small. In other words, you've reached the population limit. So increasing the quality will increase the population limit, for example. And so what we're gonna talk about first, I'm gonna do a quick demo to show you how it works, is we're gonna talk about terraforming. And I'm actually gonna do it after I conquer this colony. So I'm gonna attack this colony. It's gonna have some damage. And it's going to be right on the border of being having a suitability that's profitable for us. And I'm going to use terraforming to both fix the damage and to increase the quality by 5%. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so what we're doing in this demo here is we are bombarding a planet. We're just about to take it over. And then we're going to talk about what happens and uh, how we fix the planet, how we get it to be profitable, and how everything affects the quality. So I just finished bombarding the planet. There's no troops left on it at all. But if you hover over the quality here, you're going to see I have a 5% damage. Okay. So for a 39% quality with 5% damage, let's take a look at what that means. So actually, before we do that, so let's take a look at what this screen looks like before there's damage, right? So when you hover over this quality 39% here, um, this is what the screen looked like before I attacked the planet. And now let's take a look right here that the pull down uh, actually gets wider to show that there's damage. Okay. Uh, so let me land the troops and we'll take the planet and then we'll talk about how to manage it. Now, the first thing you notice, of course, is that my money is now, I was profitable before and now I'm at minus 26,000, right? And then part of how, what we do in, in addition to building buildings and everything else is we have to fix the planet. So it's a 6% damage from that war. Okay. So uh, normally what would happen is for a 38% quality, right? If you look at this chart here, I'll show you, you know, Octarians, which is the population. I'm human, but the Octarians of the planet, people that I invaded, they're uh, living on the planet. 
And the Actarians have, you can see here, a plus 20% for ocean planets, right? This is not a deep ocean, it's a regular ocean, so it's plus 20%. So that 38%, right, is below my base 50%, right? So the way it works is you have to subtract 50% from the 38% and then add the, the race bonus, which is 20% to that number, right? And so that gets you to 18%. You really need 20% or higher to be profitable. So right now, this planet's not going to be profitable. So what we're going to do, is, once the rebellions are done, is we're going to build, uh, first of all, we're going to build a planetary administration complex. That's just in general, nothing to do with the planet quality but it's just going to reduce corruption by 20% and add 10% colony happiness and also increase the colony development. All those things are going to make it more profitable. So of course we're going to do that. But the other thing I want to do actually first, let me get rid of that, is I want to build a, I wouldn't do it first, but I want to do it first here for you because I just want to demonstrate it's what's happening here quicker, is the terraforming facility. So what this is going to do is it's going to raise, well, it's going to fix the damage first at 2% per year. And then it's gonna improve the quality at 1% per year up to 5% higher. So if we go, let me click on that and then let's go back to the quality here. So right now my quality is 38%. It's gonna fix the 6%, which is gonna bring it back to its original 44%. That's gonna make the suitability for Octarians here, right, 24%, which is good, that's over the 20%. But then my terraforming, a facility is going to add another 5% to the quality, and that's going to raise the Octarian suitability, right, after I fix the damage from 24% to 29%. And that's going to make a big difference in the profit that we're going to make. Now, what's really going to hold back the profit for a while, of course, is this assimilation, right? Only 30% of the population is assimilated, and that has a big effect on happiness and, and, our in, and therefore our income. So, that's going to fix itself over time. Our reputation is also affecting this. Here under diplomacy, you can see it's down by 22.8%. That will go up fairly quickly. And that's from me attacking them in an unjustified war, as well as bombarding their planet, which was the big one. And that will go away pretty quickly. And all of that will increase my income. But right now you can see I'm at minus 10,000. Another thing to note is that the terraforming facility, right? Look at the maintenance cost here, 7,500 credits per year. So you don't want to be putting, you know, six or seven of these on all, all your planets. Now I just got the tech right before I started the video. So I do want to do it to all of these planets, right? So this is 78% quality in my home. I definitely want to build a terraforming facility here. When I'm done, after the 5% improvement, I can delete the facility and save myself that 7,500. But I don't want to do it for all of these at once. I want to try to get this money back above zero. And remember, it always goes back to the same thing. I really, really desperately want to be able to fund colony growth and research. Both of the, well, colony growth specifically is going to get uh, larger populations, which means more money overall. And I want to also fund research so I can do things like increase the suitability on all my planets, right? So the other way to increase suitability, of course, is in technology. And we'll talk about that in the next section. I'm going to let this run for uh, five years, and then we're going to take a look at what happened. Remember, I'm trying to fix the damage. I'm also trying to increase the quality of the planet 5% above that, right? So the target is going to be 49%. So let's let it run and see what happens. Okay, four years have gone by. What is this limited terraforming facility done for me, right? Let's take a look. So if I hover over quality here, you'll see the base quality is 44%. Now that had been lowered by damage, not the base quality, but the uh, current quality had been lowered by damage. Uh, that damage has all been repaired. And the 4% increase, it's about to be 5% as soon as I let go of the space bar. 5% terraforming improvement has made a, will, will have made very soon a total quality of 49%. So let's see it happen. Let me unpause the game, let it run, and you're going to watch the, there it goes to 5%. Now, let me pause the game again and talk about this. All right. So uh, a couple of things haven't happened yet, right? This 48 has not gone to 49. See right here, it, it, right, it should add up to 49. So the base quality is 44% and there was a 5% terraforming improvement. So this should be 49 and the 
Octarian suitability here should be 29 because it's not done. So this number flips a little too early. In fact, if you look at my date in the upper right hand corner, it's March 18th. It's not going to happen until I think around September, October timeframe. You can also tell, I'm going to unpause the game, that it's not done because something else is happening that's very, very important as to why this is such a great bonus having this terraforming improvement. The max population is going up. So as I unpause the game, you can see the max population going up. I'm going to explain what that formula is that's doing this, but suffice it to say that the quality directly affects the max population. And more max population means less penalties, or it takes longer to get a penalty from your population getting too high. So once your population goes a certain amount over the max population, you start getting financial penalties. You get corruption, I think, and your income will go down. And right now, actually, I think they're going to change it. There's some kind of, uh, it's not working the way I think they want it to. So this will be updated, but you're still going to pay a penalty eventually at this point. So, uh, not at this point, but when you reach the max population. So this is really good that's going up. So now, well, actually it doesn't stop yet, but when this stops very soon, then we'll know. And also what's going to happen over here, if you look back to the uh, pop-up here under quality, uh, now you can see it's reached 49. So it thinks it's done, but it's still not done yet because the word max is going to appear right next to the 5%. And you can see my max population still going up. I've kept everything circled here so you can watch it, okay? All right. Uh, it's almost September, so I think it's almost done. And then I'm going to talk about the formula for the max pop, because I think you might find it interesting. Okay. There it goes. Now it's only pause the game. So it now says maximum. So now it's safe to delete the terraforming facility. It can't do any more. You can research a higher level one, the next, I think it's two tiers up, I think, but uh, the next highest one in research, I'll show that screen in a little bit. And then you can do it again and raise it another 5%. And there's one above that as well. In addition, and we'll talk about this in the next part of the uh, video, you can also raise the suitability by the race. And we'll talk about that. All of these things are gonna improve your income. Uh, but right now I just wanna talk about deleting this. So I'm going to delete this terraforming facility. Now watch the game's actually going to update even though I'm paused, which is kind of scary and weird, but I'm going to delete this and you're going to watch my cash flow here. It's going to go up right now. It's at 7,500, you know, roughly. So let me delete this facility because you want to delete this right away and maybe even now consider building it as long as your cash flow is still very positive and can afford, you know, to put research and population growth, which is so important. If I can delete this now, Watch this pop up. Okay, it made a liar out of me. Sometimes it, yeah, there it goes. Okay, good. Uh, now I would build one on another planet and let that grow and then delete it off that planet in five years and then go to the next planet until all your colonies get the 5% bonus. And it's going to make a big difference in money. Now, it's hard to tell here on this planet because, you know, it was also gaining assimilation, right? So if I come over here, it's 69% assimilated. I think it was 30% when you left. And uh, the happiness is going up because they're not so upset about me conquering them. Unhappy being part of the human empire is zero. And there, there's always a penalty here when you first conquer them. So you can't judge the increase here or the less negative tax income here to that quality boost, but it definitely is affecting it. And so when you do it to your capital, for example, which doesn't have any of these assimilation issues, money will go up significantly. Okay. So very good to do this stuff. Now let me explain uh, the max pop. So here's how the max pop is calculated. It's based on geometry. So you're going to have to go back to school. Don't worry. I'll, I'll do all the math. You can just watch. Uh, but you have to go back to school and remember that the surface area of a sphere, now the earth in, and I assume other planets, habitable planets, are not perfect spheres, right? They're, they they bulge a little in the center, but roughly it's good enough for an approximation here to be a sphere. And the surface area for a sphere is 4 times pi times r squared. Now, r is the radius. The diameter is this thing called size. I don't know why they name it size here and then down here they call it diameter. So you can see it in both places here. But it means the same thing in the game. This means the diameter, and that's in miles. Just for reference, the Earth, I think, is around 7,000 plus or minus miles in diameter. So this is slightly smaller than the Earth. 
So if the size is, or the diameter is 6,000 roughly, right, then the radius is roughly 3,000. So we're going to do 4 times pi times 3,062 is the exact number squared. All right, and that's going to equal a surface area of roughly 118 million square miles. We're going to then multiply that by the quality. So in this case, about half, right? So it's going to be about half of 118 million miles. So it ends up being about 58 million square miles. So it's quality times the surface area gives you a livable surface area, let's say, of about 58 million square miles. Finally, to get to the max pop, you have to figure out how many people can live on each square mile, right? So the game uses a rough number of about 200 people per square mile. And just for reference, I think the planet Earth has about 70, maybe I think 70 people, you know, the, the average across the whole planet, 70 people per square mile, whereas New Jersey, I think uh, where I am is about 6,000 or 7,000 people per square mile. So it's definitely in between those two. I guess it's assuming that we build a lot of cities everywhere. Uh, and there's a lot of urban sprawl across most of the habitable part of the planet. Regardless of what motivation the developer used, he picked the number 200 people per square mile, the habitable part of the planet. So we're going to say about 50% of the planet is habitable at 49% quality. So that turns out to be, right, about approximately 60 million square miles times 200 people gives you this 11 billion. So 11 a uh, thousand million is 11 billion. So about 11 and a half billion people. We're nowhere near that here. We're only at uh, 2.7 billion. So there's a long way to go. But by increasing this max pop, we definitely helped ourselves to put that cap much higher before we start paying a penalty in revenue. So one last thing to talk about before we go to the tech screen and take a look at some research that will also help us increase quality and or suitability is after you conquer a planet, these are two things we want to do. And one of them is we don't, we want to make sure that we don't get migration to this planet from human beings. And sometimes I already have that existing, like there may have already been humans here. So what I want to do is I want to click here on the population rules policies, and I want to make sure I resettle any human beings. This will make sure I don't have any of these other races. If I did, I'd also include them. In fact, you could just do them all right now. It wouldn't really matter. Go all the way down. I, I want to make sure that only Actarians are here because Actarians are the best for ocean planets. Now, if I put the race chart back up again, I, I showed it to you earlier in the video, you would see which populations will do okay on a particular planet, right? But there's no reason, I might as well have only Octarians here, and on my continental planets, I'll put humans, okay? I'll give you another example. If I go to this colony here, you can see I have both humans and Octarians, and this is deep ocean water, so it's definitely going to be better for Octarians, 45, that's one of their favorite places, but humans are only plus 10, right? So that's going to make it less profitable for more humans. So I definitely want to go here and hit resettle. So when I conquer a planet, I want to make sure that only the races that do well on this type of planet, in this case, the deep ocean, are settling here. And if, again, if I had these other races, I would care about these, but I only have humans and Actarians. So I want to make sure I hit resettle here. And what will eventually happen is uh, these humans will leave, which is back basically about half the population, and the Octarians will be left alone on the planet and they'll become much more profitable. You can see it's right now, it's struggling at minus 1,909, even though I believe they're all assimilated. Yep. So I definitely want to do that every time I conquer a planet. So terraforming to fix the damage and increase the quality overall. And then of course, number two is make sure you resettle any humans or other races that are at that planet that don't have over 20% suitability, as in the case here with humans. All right, let's take a look at the research screen. And uh, we're going to talk about other ways we can improve quality and suitability. Okay, finally, we're going to look at texts that improve suitability. So I'm researching this tech, I'm almost done, called Improved Continental Colonization. Let's take a look at that. And you'll see at the bottom here that after I finish this research, I'm going to get a minus 10 colonization quality threshold. There's a weird way that they kind of mix the race bonus versus a colonization quality threshold. 
Uh, and again, this is not per race. This is going to be for all races. So all you need to know is that when you research this one or some of the earlier ones from this one, there's one before this one here, they're going to basically increase the suitability for all races by 10. Okay. And that's all we care about. So that's a big, big improvement. The first one I researched already earlier in the game was a five increase. So now I'm going up five more to be a total of 10 increase. Okay. It doesn't stack. That just means that you've gone from five to 10. All right, let's see it happen. So what I'm expecting to happen is right here, when I hover over quality, the quality is not going to change. That would change from terraforming, but the suitability for humans and any other race that was here. Now, there's only humans here, so I don't have to worry about it. But if there were other races here, they'd all go up by five. See, they're already up five from the previous tech. So this one's going to make the total bonus to be 10. So they're all going to go up five more. So this is going to be plus 43. I'm going to expect it to go to plus 48. And then what you're going to see is my corruption is going to drop a little bit. And my revenue is going to go up. My net tax revenue is going to go up from 35,000 or 36,000 here, roughly, to something like 50, maybe even 45 or 50. It's a big, big jump, right? So let's see what happens. Let's unpause the game. And remember, we're I'm going to circle both of these for you so you can watch them both change. I'll actually, I'll circle the income too. All right, so here it goes. But the main thing is this suitability is going to jump from 43 to 48. And there it goes. Okay, so the suitability went up to 48. See, my revenue went to 55,000, my net revenue, my corruption dropped. I think it was 35% to 32%. And of course, that makes my uh, my cash flow uh, go up as well. All right, let's take a look at the text that, uh, let me pause the game and let's take a look at the text that got me here. So I will, yeah, I will, sir, let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to, this basic colonization here is, of course, how we start colonizing. Everybody has to take that. But then this is the first terraforming level. So this is what we did. We did a 5% quality improvement. So we used this one. We built the limiting terraforming facility. And if you go further down, so if you go all the way over here, you're going to get another one. This would... Uh, do up to a 10% improvement. So again, that's going to be five more percentage. It's not 10 stacking with the other five. It's going to be a quality improvement of 5% more. And then there's another tier above that to 15%. Uh, then there's one to 20%. And finally to 20. Oh, that's just a faster one. It, could, it just does it faster. Uh, and it repairs damage much faster too, but it's still 20%. Okay. So those are the techs that we're going to do for terraforming. And then the techs for your planet type, of course, depend on your planet type. So I was just looking at continental. And of course, I would also be interested in water. In fact, I've done two levels of water here. Okay. Deep ocean and ocean because I have Octarians and of course I have humans. So these are the two that interest me. Uh, temperate also humans aren't bad on temperate. So I might do this one soon. And then I need all of them eventually to get to the next colonization uh, terraforming facility. So I'll probably eventually do them all. But right now I just completed this one. So as you can see, it went from five from the earlier one to 10. So that's how we increase suitability uh, by five increments each. And of course that makes my planet more uh, profitable. That's the goal. Okay, so I think that gives you a pretty good feel or what suitability means, how to make it higher, what quality means, how to make that higher, how that affects pop limit, as well as the revenue that you generate. So I hope that gave you a good feel for this stuff and a little bit about invasions as well. And don't forget to subscribe. So when I do my next episode in this series, that you can uh, be alerted when it comes out and good hunting.